Hello, my lovelies. It's been a little bit. I just wanted to do a little update. So, when I left off a couple weeks ago, we were dealing with um, an issue with our house that we were in. We had no water for like two months. We just went to court. Da 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 da. So, we ended up getting an apartment. Turned in our application on a Wednesday, and by Thursday night, we had the keys. So we got all moved in, kids are all settled in, um, still unpacking. Gotta love all that random, <laughs> you get all the big stuff put away, and then you have all these random panic boxes <laughs> where you just threw everything in. And now you have no idea what to do with any of it. So, yeah, we're at that point. <laughs> but it's great. It's a huge upgrade for us. So, all is well on that front. Um, obviously, since that issue kind of fixed itself, the mental health aspect has been better, too. Um actually look forward to coming home from work every day again so that's promising um, I'm actually really sad because I have placed some of my crystals all around that house for protection and I forgot them so kind of sad but it's okay um yeah I see that everybody liked the paranormal adventure stock the last time so I figured that I'd give that another shot for now and kind of see where we go from there um We've actually done another investigation since then. We were at Father John's Micro Brewery in Bryan, Ohio. Last, yeah, last weekend. So, that was fun. Um, really cool place. Um, stained glass windows, the chapel, all that is just oh, absolutely gorgeous. They have like a little, kind of like renaissance aged themed restaurant downstairs and it's really cute. Um, we got some good activity, some nice evidence. Um, it was one of those, it's kind of hard to explain. <laughs> um. It was different because uh, it's kind of like a different setup. Um, downstairs is the restaurant bar and then you have a chapel upstairs and on the other side you have the bed and breakfast. So that's where you can stay and you can investigate over there too. The rooms are really cool. The bed's a good size. Everything's really clean. Um, all that was cool. But it's just kind of weird how it's set up. Like it was, I don't want to say weird like it's a bad thing, but not like we're used to. Like usually we go in this place, we meet somebody, they give us a tour, and bam, we're on our own. But this, the restaurant's open a little later. And then you kind of have people in and out for the first part of it, so... It was just a little different. Um, we had to get used to that. But it was really cool having the chapel aspect of it. Um, one of the big focal points there is that, you know, all religions are welcome. And, like, they have, like, a Buddha. And they have Christian things and... You have Islam and all kinds of different religions are showcased. 
and there's actually a body under the floor in one of the places where there's a cross shaped wooden table that they have suspended from the ceiling you can actually reserve that room and eat above a mummified closed in body <sighs> to each their own we got that the spirit was not very happy that they felt disrespected and that it was kind of just like a mockery so didn't go over so well down there um, we did get names um, we got names of some of the workers some people that were connected to those workers um, just a lot of stuff that made sense uh, our friend Lucy got a name of a spirit by the bar that ended up being connected to one of the workers. Um, try to think. It's been a busy week. Um, yeah, it was just, it wasn't anything like super profound, but it was, I liked it. I really liked it. We got evidence, we had fun, and we got to see a really cool place, so that's what it's all about. And part of the reason I said it's been a long week, we have been battling strep throat in our house. <laughs> Started with my youngest son two weeks ago, then I ended up with it, then my oldest just ended up with it. A couple of days ago. So it's been lots of bleaching and Lysoling and ugh, just yuck. So that's kind of why I haven't said a whole lot or why I haven't posted in a while. Um, I said we moved, everybody started getting sick, and we had an investigation. So Anybody that does investigations knows that, like, yeah, you're only there for maybe 12 hours or less. But it takes, like, the whole weekend to, <laughs> just like, say we have a Saturday investigation. We don't pack until before we leave. <laughs> We're horrible at packing early, so I won't even lie and say we pack on Friday. <laughs> Uh, we'll usually stay up kind of late, like Friday night, so we can sleep in a little bit Saturday, and then most of the time, <sighs> excuse me, <laughs> yawn came out of nowhere, and then we'll wake up Saturday, we'll pack real quick, pack up the car, take off, get something to eat like halfway there. So, you're talking most of the day Saturday. We usually get to locations at like 7 or 8, maybe 9. Um, lately, I think we've been averaging about three, two and a half to 4 hours away. So, that's not too bad. But, I mean, you're talking about 8 hours driving time right there. So, yeah. So you're talking about driving, we'll say three and a half hours. You get there, you investigate. Sometimes we stay the night. Um, we have got a room at the bed and breakfast at Father John's, but oh, apparently I'm really tired. <laughs> More tired than I thought, excuse me. But... My husband fell right asleep. I lay in there. I had just, I think it was Thursday, I tested a positive for strip, and then that was Saturday. I just couldn't sleep. I laid there for an hour and a half, and the whole time I was thinking that if I just woke him up and started driving and let him sleep, 
then we'd already be home by now. <laughs> so finally about, I think, 5, 5.30, I woke him up and I was like, hey, let's just go. I want my bed. <laughs> I don't feel good. I just want sleep in my bed. So we packed up. Everybody else was still asleep. Um, headed home. And then you're talking, I think we got home around 9 a.m., so this is Sunday at 9 a.m. You're just now going to bed. So sleep for a couple hours, wake up, eat, go back to sleep pretty much. So it, I mean, even if it's a eight hour investigation, it takes up a good chunk of time, which I'm not complaining, but just being transparent, kind of rambling, honestly, but... <laughs> That's just kind of what investigations look like for us. So. Yes. I know this has been a kind of short one, but I really do feel like I'm rambling and I'm going to keep yawning more. Because, you know, that's attractive to listen to on a podcast. <laughs> Sorry. So, I am going to call it quits then. Um... Happy to talk to everyone again this week. Promise. I try to promise. And it won't be another three weeks from now. Um, let me know what you guys want to hear. If you want to hear more paranormal. Um, more on kids. I do. A big one that I want to talk about. Is parental alienation. And you know along those lines, so, um, abandonment, not alienate, well, I guess the same thing, anyway, I will end this there, um, one final thought, I don't know if you're from Indiana, Ohio area, we had some really bad weather last night, we had a few tornadoes in the area, um, we're about 30-ish minutes from Winchester, Indiana, where they have, well, what they're saying so far might be an F3 touchdown and went through Randolph County. Um, our paranormal team actually met at the Randolph County Asylum. The asylum was not hit by the tornado, but another property owned by the same group, the Stone Mansion, was hit. And it did suffer some pretty decent damage. So, they are on Facebook. Um, they are asking for help if anyone is local and wants to go help them. Um, you can find them online at Save the Old Properties or I think Randolph County Asylum on like their actual name on Facebook. But... Um, I think April 6th, they're having volunteers come out to help. I think we're going to be out there then if you want to come check it out. Come help some good people. Um, we got to protect old buildings like this, guys. This place is absolutely gorgeous. I love it. We went there a while back. or Well, it was about this time last year, actually. Oh, God, that's crazy to think about. But Winchester got hit really hard. Um, there ended up being no fatalities, but I think 38 injuries. Houses were completely leveled. Um, businesses, hospital, a nursing home. So just keep them in your thoughts, your vibes, your prayers, whatever you do. Just think about them. And if you can, help them out in any way, shape, or form possible. Also, the victims in Selma and over in Ohio and wherever else any other tornadoes hit yesterday so it's pretty scary for a minute we ended up in the bathtub I was in, I was in the shower and my husband came in he's like hey tornado sirens are going off and I'm like fuck what do we do when they actually go off <laughs> like we live in a second story apartment now what the fuck and of course the kids were here so that was not fun. That's why I'm so tired. 
So, anyway, that's my spiel about Winchester, Selma, Ohio. Keep them all in your thoughts and prayers. Love and light and all things happy and positive your way this week. So, love y'all. Bye.